Hey everyone, I'm Chris Lesniak. And I'm Rob Byer, and this is the Debate Math Podcast. So Common Core Standard of Math Practice number three states that we should have students construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. So let's get some practice with that. And you know, we have a very unique debate today with some possibly familiar faces and names who you normally see together, but we decided to split them up. <laughs> we wanted to have some fun and explore a debate you may have had at some point, an exercise in definitions and argumentation that can be fun or serious. So today we have two family teams of two debating the resolution, a hot dog is a sandwich. And here debating for the resolution that a hot dog is a sandwich, we have a fantastic father-daughter team led by a high school math teacher, John Orr. Hi, John. Hey, Chris. Uh, thanks so much for having us. And with me today is my daughter, Lucy Orr, a grade six student here in Tilbury. Hi, Lucy. Hi. <laughs> John, can you tell us, our listeners, where you are and what your current role is? Yeah, sure, sure thing. Uh, we live in Tilbury, Ontario, Canada, which is just uh, a little, you know, uh, uh, a little to the west of Toronto, uh, and actually a little south uh, of of Detroit. So pretty close to Detroit, uh, very close to where Kyle is from as well. Um, and I'm a, a, a high school math teacher right now. I am teaching uh, three different sections. Uh, grade, I've got a grade ten class. Uh, I've got a grade uh, eleven, a uh, twelve class, and I've got a grade nine class. Very good. And Lucy, can you tell us what grade you're in and what math topic you're learning right now? Um, I'm in grade six, and right now we're learning about fractions, decimals, and percentage all together. Excellent. All right, and now the question we ask all of our guests, and, I, and I'll throw this to you here, John. Um, when did math first become controversial to you? Yeah, uh, you know what? I I, I was I, I knew you guys were going to ask this because of, of the the episodes I've listened to in the past, and I feel like when I first started teaching, I, I felt like as a math teacher, there was like one way to teach math. It was like, this is the way, you know, my, uh, my dad is a math teacher. I had seen him teach math. I had seen all my teachers teach it the exact same way he taught math. And when I became a math teacher and started to realize that I needed to change the way I was teaching math, because I taught math in that very you know, traditional way that my father did it, the way my, all my high school teachers did it. And when I realized I needed to change that, I became, uh, it almost became like controversial because I was doing something different. And, and it was some, it was different than what my dad had done. And it was different than what, what the, the, my teachers had done, the teachers in my department were doing. And so I felt like it was like I was an outsider. And, and, and I know there's some other people that are like that too. And, and I felt like I didn't realize that math could be ex, you know, excluding people. I felt excluded from my school and my department because I was doing those things. And it was my first instance or my first glance of realizing that, that math can exclude people. And and uh, since then, uh, I've learned so many different ways math can exclude people, and it's a it's a it's a big journey of mine to like think about how can I include as many people as we can into mathematics learning. Um, but that was my kind of first kind of switch that that could possibly math itself, math teaching, math learning can can be that thing that separates individuals. Very good, thank you, and and great, and welcome to you both. Thank you for having us. We're excited. <laughs> uh, and here, and here, debating against the, uh, the resolution that a hot dog is not a sandwich, we have a fantastic father-daughter team led by K-12 math consultant and high school math teacher, Kyle Pierce. Hi, Kyle. Hey, how we doing, friends? Thanks, uh, thanks for having us. Hey, can you tell us uh, where you are and uh, what your current role is? So my uh, current role, uh, as you mentioned, is K to 12 math consultant and uh, at, like John came out of the secondary panel. So I spent all of my my own classroom time in the secondary panel. Now that I'm in this role, though, I'm spending tons of time in elementary and that's where I've done, I, I would argue, most of my uh, both 
like pedagogical learning as well as my content knowledge learning. So it's been uh, a fantastic journey. And uh, I'm in Bell River, Ontario with uh, my daughter, Tally. I'll let her uh, introduce herself in, uh, in a moment. And that is uh, just about 20 minutes up the road from John. So just south of Detroit and Windsor, Ontario, and, uh, you know, three or so hours uh, away from Toronto. So, so that's us. And hi, Talia. Uh, Talia, can you tell us what grade you're in and what math topic you've most recently been learning? I'm in grade four and I'm learning multiplication and division. Oh, wow. All right. That's exciting stuff. Um, now, so Kyle, the question that we ask all of our guests, when did math first become controversial to you? You know, I knew John was going to say what he just said. And my story is an like awful lot planned. like his. So I've kind of, I kind of changed my, you know, my thoughts on that a little bit. You know, my, my story, uh, you know, I, I thought I knew a lot about mathematics when I went into university because my grade suggested that I did. I, I never really thought I knew much about it, but the grade said it. So, uh, you know, I kind of went with that. And, you know, going past my experience, I had a lot of struggles in university with math. Um, but then into teaching, what I realized at some point was, holy smokes, like I hadn't seen, you know, the conceptual side of the math. So I know that still sounds a lot like John's story, but what I'm realizing more and more now, as we dig into the nuance of how the math develops, that there's such a, a massive story that, you know, we could tell and we could learn as both students and educators that was never told, like I never experienced that side. And it's so interesting because now that I'm in this role and I'm trying to help other educators see that side, it's very controversial because, you know, a lot of people say like this, this is just the way it is, right? So again, still mirroring a lot of what John said here, um, I just find that, you know, once, once you have the, your own epiphanies about how, for example, Talia's doing multiplication and division that, hey, there's there's two types of division. We talk about it on the podcast all the time. That's my big epiphany over the past couple of years and that it influences so many other concepts uh, up the roadmap, including, you know, ratios and rates. That to me is like mind blowing. And and it, there's so much controversy when we get into that, that proportional reasoning land, when we start saying, like, what's a ratio? What's a rate? How does it work? You know, all of those things to me, uh, makes math really controversial when all the way through my own learning, it was pretty simplistic. Like I thought it was just like, you know, you, you pump in some numbers and out come some answers and, and that's what it is. So I look at it more like you would look at like a literacy sub, you know, like how we look at English, how, you know, there's, there's so many different perspectives to it. And, and for me, I think that's such a, like a fascinating, you know, discovery for myself and for all of us in the math world to be able to, you know, sort of bring that to more students that are growing up. Excellent. Thank you both. And with that, let's get into the debate. All right. We begin with opening statements from each of our speakers. You each have two minutes to present your arguments. And based on the coin flip before this recording, we are starting with the pro side that a hot yes. dog is a sandwich. Yes. So John and Lucy, you are up first. Lucy, are you ready? Your time will begin right now. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, Lucy uh, is going to, she, we've prepared an opening statement together, but Lucy, hey, she's got the guts here. She's going to read it out loud for everybody. All right, Lucy, take it away. I believe that there's a bunch of things that are sandwiches, like an Oreo cookie is a sandwich, an ice cream sandwich is a sandwich, and a peanut butter jelly sandwich is a sandwich. Also, a hamburg sandwich is a hamburger is a sandwich. So why can't the meat and the hot dog and with bread be a sandwich? It can because all those other things are sandwiches. They're just not called sandwiches. I believe the hot dog is between the bread or on top of the bread to be a sandwich. Also, technically, a piece of bread with any sort of filling inside is a sandwich. Just because something's not called a sandwich doesn't necessarily mean that it's not a sandwich. It's basically a special type of sandwich. Like my dad's favorite sandwich is a 
Reuven sandwich. Mm -hmm. That's yummy. It's just called something different. So that is a special type of sandwich. That's why I believe that hot dog is a sandwich. That concludes our opening statement. Well done, well done. Yes. Thank you. And now we'll hear from the opposing side. Uh, that's Kyle and Talia. Uh, you are opposed to the fact that a hot dog is a sandwich. And you have two minutes and your time begins now. All right, Talia is going to take us through this one as well. Go for it, T-Bird. Say you had a busy day and you're looking forward to the next your next meal. Your parents ask you what you want on your sandwich. You say, I'm so hungry, I will take any sandwich. But do you know I, what I guarantee they won't give me? A hot dog, because a hot dog is definitely not a sandwich. Here are three warrants why I think a hot dog is different than a sandwich. A, hot, a sandwich has two pieces of bread, while a hot dog bun is a single piece of bread. When the last time you, when's the last time you've heard someone ask for a single piece of bread for a sandwich? Sandwich. You add toppings to a hot dog without removing a bun, while the ingredients added to a sandwich require removing the top piece of bread. You can almost add add unlimited amount of toppings to a sandwich, whereas a hot dog has its limits with no, with no bread to hold it in. For these three warrants, it should be clear to all that a hot dog is clearly not a sandwich and has its un own unique category outside of the sandwich category. That's word. Wow. So you gave us a, a lot to think about. Um, so one side is saying that a sandwich is literally bread with filling. And the other side is saying, if I ask for a sandwich, they're not going to give me a hot dog. So let, let's dive into this a little more here in our question round. Um, so does temperature matter? This is for both teams. Does it matter if it's hot or cold mm. to call it a sandwich? And maybe start mm. over here with, with Talia. I see you nodding. Yeah, I don't know if this came up in our in our pre uh, pre planning meeting here. What do you think? Well, for a hot dog, usually it has um, like the hot dog is usually warm, okay. but in a sandwich, you could have something warm in it, but it's usually not a hot dog. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And, and Lucy, do you want to add anything to that? Um. What? A hamburger is warm. Yeah, that's a warm sandwich. Oh, there you go. Okay. Are you able to have a cold sandwich? What do you think? I was just uh, saying, I, I, I especially like uh, on Thanksgiving uh, the next day, hot turkey sandwiches. Mm. And you know what an interesting thing about a hot turkey sandwich, even though the sandwich is hot, because obviously we've all had sandwiches that are cold. But uh, but a hot turkey sandwich, a lot of times it's uh, a, also called an open faced sandwich. Whoa. So and, uh, which is one <laughs> piece of bread, right? One piece of right, oh, and then you put the meat on, and then there's gravy on top of that. Yeah, open faced sandwich with one piece of bread is so, a hot so sandwich. Tell you Still called a sandwich. You know, when he said open faced sandwich. It made it sound as if you had to specifically. You had to specifically articulate that that part of the actual sandwich was missing. Like it was like it was like it's open face because it's not like a regular sandwich. Would you? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Just, I don't know. But if you call, if you went <laughs> to a restaurant and asked for a hot turkey sandwich, you don't have to articulate that it is an open face sandwich. It's just a special name we give to that type of sandwich. Hmm, I feel like the story changed. What do you think? I don't know. Okay. But that's good, <laughs> well, that's good. And, <laughs> so, I don't know, so the story changed. Kind of following well, up then, I want, I'm curious about both sides, your definition. Does it have to have like a top and a bottom bread or whatever on top, top and bottom? bottom? Or can it be just so. open faced? No. No? no. Yeah, see. And, and I think I think our definition, and this is what makes you know this and and many other debates uh, very interesting, is sort of what is your definition. I think I think we've used the definition that a sandwich has 
two pieces of bread, bread right? Because that was some in mm. warrants as well. Right. Of one piece of bread is not really a sandwich. Yeah, that, that just mm. feels so a intuitive. Sandwich, <laughs> a sandwich has two pieces of bread to hold it all together, but I don't know, like... But if you have one piece of bread, it was it doesn't it's not a sandwich. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, so right. Talia, can I ask you a question? So, when we think of a sandwich, does it have to be bread? So, could we have maybe two leaves of lettuce and have some toppings in between the lettuce? Would that still be considered a sandwich? Yeah. Ooh, or does it have to be bread? Oh. It doesn't have to be bread, but it just has to be two things that holds all the stuff inside. Oh, so it's almost like you're, you. yeah, that's a really good question because I think you and I were saying bread, but now we're sort of saying that didn't matter as much as the two-ness of it, right? Would you agree? Like we were thinking like you have to have like these two things to kind hmm. of hold it together, I'm, you know? I think we're, we're curious over here about a question uh, for you guys. Um, is a wrap a sandwich? Yeah, like if you use a wrap, it's a sandwich. Is that a, a sandwich? No, not 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 for us. <laughs> it's called the wrap because if it was if it was a sandwich, it would be called a sandwich, but it's called a wrap. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Mm -hmm. Special, special so, own category, just like a hot definitely dog. Definitely special. It's definitely special. <laughs> so uh, so I'm, I'm almost curious. Also, too, it's like the fact that you're saying two separate pieces uh but we could have this 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 bending nature that creates a top wouldn't you say like mm -hmm. if i took a, a big piece of bread instead of cutting because if really a, two pieces of bread is from the same loaf wouldn't you say so right and it's like we cut cut the same piece of bread which is a loaf mm. of bread is the same piece of bread you cut it and then you put it on top. Now, isn't that isn't that the same as just say, let's say we had a big piece of bread and then we just wrapped it on top like that? Isn't it, Talia, when you, you think? think that if I had a big piece of bread and I wrapped the top like that, isn't that a sandwich? Well, it could be, but um, if like th that would be basically like a sub. Yeah, that's oh, true. Is so a sub a sandwich? So, <laughs> so, well, I, so don't I you, for, I want to, I want to keep going like, here. Yeah. There's like a hot a, there's, dog bun. Cause a hot dog bun is just the wrap. It, it's, it's wrapped, right? Yeah, so the hot dog bun wraps around the hot dog. It has, it has a hot think, dog in turn it. Turn the hot dog sideways and you have a top and a bottom. Yeah. But if you put a hot dog in a sandwich, usually you would be like, that's, that's, different and like usually if you go to like a hot dog vendor and you say give me a sandwich they're gonna mm. look at you like you're crazy because they wouldn't know what you mean and, and this this is just it and you know it's interesting though i feel like you're you're going down to first principles of of sandwich making john which i think is fantastic right like going all the way back to the loaf before it was cut and <laughs> and sort of you know making it work that way but you know i think for I, I think I'm almost getting more clear on our on our um, characteristics of of a sandwich or a hot dog, and for us, it's that it's that oneness versus that two-ness. Like a wrap is like one typically like one piece of of bread or or uh, pita, and it's wrapped together. And the hot dog is 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 it has its own one bun unless you were to rip it apart, as John had mentioned. Um, and the same could be said for a sandwich, but typically it's like when I go to fill up my sandwich, I take that top, I, I make it an open face sandwich temporarily, right, John? Just like your tur hot turkey. And then we load everything on there and you could get so Spend much just on sub there. Bun. And, just, and then just toss, toss the top right back on there. And with a hot dog, that is just awfully hard to do. And I just feel like it would just be so unfair to, to you know, say that- I, I routinely up a hot have dog the and bun and the bun is still attached <laughs> to, the, to the, I just I just do this and then I load it up. So uh, uh, Lucy, I'm gonna come to you, to you Lucy. Yeah, so stuff down. I know you're writing stuff down. You're doing such a good job of writing it down because I know you're, you're about to come out with some more great stuff. So with, with you talking about like a meat, and, and some bread, right? 
Uh, what about a taco? Would a taco be considered a sandwich? Interesting. Oh, I can't. I mean, with, with your definition, you, you said that it would be. <laughs> Kyle's that's Kyle, what she wrote. For, 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 for everybody who uh, is listening on the podcast, you definitely want to jump over to YouTube to see this because uh, they held up a, a sign that Talia wrote that said, no. So, so based on your definition, Lucy, would a taco be a sandwich? Yes. Yeah. It's a special type of sandwich. No. <laughs> So, <laughs> no or yes? No. Oh, oh. Why, She's saying no. Why not? Why not? Because the meat's broken up. The meat's broken up. Oh. Well, okay. That's okay. Not, well, let's let's keep going with because that. Because it's like, because it's meat's broken up. What? Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Well, well what about like a, not, like a... The meat's broken up. It's not a sandwich. But, but yes, because they have all the same toppings. They so have yes, but no. The same types of toppings. Yeah. Okay. So she's then saying the, yes and no. <laughs> what she yes says, or no. <laughs> she is saying yes and no. So then I guess yes, the question sandwich. Yes. Then the question I have I would okay be it's broken up, don't you? It's a special sandwich. It's a special sandwich, just like a hot dog is a special sandwich. It's still a sandwich, though. Chris, you have uh, some questions? Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, let me go over to Talia here. Uh, so you said so you and uh, your dad seem to think that a sandwich has to have like two parts, like two pieces of bread or something. So then, would you call things like a s'more a sandwich? Ooh. It could be, but a special sandwich. I, I I would call personally. We never discuss this, but I would call it a a, a special sandwich. That is because it has two crackers and then all the things inside, like the chocolate mm -hmm. and marshmallows. Mm -hmm. Except there's so, no meat. There's no oh, there's no meat. But it doesn't have to have a meat because sometimes I have a sandwich that has butter and mustard. Do, well, and I was going to ask: Are vegetarians allowed to eat sandwiches? Yeah, they do. You could know. have you could have lettuce and mustard sure. or or tomatoes. vegans. You know, just a thought. Okay. And, and then maybe back to Lucy. So you, your definition was it's bread with some kind of filling inside. So, so I'm guessing, would you, would you count a s'more as a sandwich? Because there's no bread involved. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a sandwich. What, what about two pieces of bread with nothing in the middle? Is that a sandwich? Ooh. Ooh. That, that sounds like an almost depleted loaf of bread. Nice. That's just bread, yeah. I think I don't think that's a sandwich. That, that's <laughs> that's just a really used loaf of bread, right? I have a, I have a question about the uh, you guys brought up. Um, yeah, it's just toast. Um, one of your warrants, um, uh, I think it was warrants that you said uh, said that uh, that a, I think you were implying that a hot dog only has a limited amount of toppings. Uh, uh, for a hot dog, but a sandwich could have a lot of toppings. Yeah, mm -hmm. because if you and put a I'm lot curious of about toppings that because... in a hot dog, then it, the hot dog bun will break and everything will fall out. But then, and then it will, and then it won't make like then it will just spill out. It was like kind of like a like gravitational pull that I think is working against you with a hot dog, right? Like if I yeah. if I throw on. You know, you're a better, I think you have a better luck of holding more stuff in a hot dog bun than in, in a sandwich with, with the two pieces of bread and we can follow the sides. Yeah, but this is like a little carrying case bread. for a sandwich. Sorry. If you have, but if you have two pieces of bread, then um, on, the, on the top and bottom, you could put as much as you want. It could even be that thick. Mm -hmm. but, then, I agree. but if you put a lot of sauces, just sauces, then that will fall out. But if you put actual toppings, then it won't fall out. Mm -hmm. So, Talia, can I ask you a question? Sorry, go ahead, Rob. Yeah, sorry. So, Talia, I, I want to ask you a question. So, like, we keep talking about having, like, two pieces of, like, bread or lettuce, and that would be a sandwich. What, what if two people give you a hug? If two people give you a hug, is it a Talia sandwich? Yeah. <laughs> There's no filling inside. Now, Talia's yeah, the filling. I'm the filling. 
So, so now I guess here's, here's my question. And this is for our, our friends, the pro hot dog is a sandwich friends. Um, if I came and gave John a hug, is that a sandwich? Because I mean, if, if a hot dog is a sandwich, then me just hugging John should be a sandwich, should it not? An open face you hug. Would. An yeah, open, open, an open face, face, face hug. hug. That's, that's that exactly is. what that's, it that's is. That's all that is. It's an open face hug. It's totally a sandwich. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so it, for both John teams, Kyle sandwich. For both teams, it. then does, does it have to be food to be a sandwich? No. So. Mm -hmm. Wow. This this, this is got, this, this has got gotten a, very. This deep. has got a. Uh, she had this epiphany. Go ahead. Um, hot dog is the same thing as bologna. And you put bologna on a sandwich. Interesting. The ingredients. Just a bologna sandwich. That's all we're talking about here. Yeah, but then why do they call it bologna instead of a hot dog? Made of bologna. It's the ingredients. I'm so confused. Mm. <laughs> so a, so a question though. I have then is, would you say if you went and you ordered a bologna sandwich and someone gave you a hot dog, would you, would you walk away feeling like you received what you had ordered? What do you think? If you say, hey, can I have a bologna sandwich? And they gave you a hot dog. What do you think about that? I'd be pleasantly surprised myself. <laughs> but, but you don't get bologna sandwiches at restaurants. No. But mm. if but if you ask for a hot dog, they'll give you a hot dog. They won't give you a bologna sandwich because mm -hmm. it because if you say get, can I have a bologna right. sandwich, they'll give you a bologna sandwich. If you say can right. I have a hot dog, they'll give you a hot dog. That's, that's, so I think, think that's things. definitely right. Not, I think we're not saying that uh, a hot dog isn't a hot dog. We're just saying it's a special type of sandwich. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so now I guess my next question be, is this would I'm going to start with uh, Lucy on this. Because I think I know what you're going to say. And then we'll go to Talia right after. Um, what about a Pop-Tart? Mm. Is a Pop-Tart a sandwich? Nope. Maybe it's a, maybe a dessert sandwich? Or a breakfast sandwich? Yeah, what do you think? It's got the, it's got the stuff inside, right? Yeah, yeah, stuff inside, right? And there's... What? doesn't have another cracker on top. Well, it's like pastry. It's enclosed. And then it's there's, enclosed. Like, there's like uh, the jelly or whatever, or the filling in the inside of the Pop-Tart. Lucy doesn't have a lot of Pop-Tarts. I had one. <laughs> She's had one before. <laughs> well, at least you know what they are. All right, well, let's go over to Talia. Talia, do you, I, wait, 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 Pop-Tart? Wait, wait, do, we, do we think so? I think so. Based on our definition, right? It's got, yes. it's got the surrounding and it's got a filling in the inside. That's a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and talia i don't think it is because no, um, a pop chart so. has like basically um like filling inside but like if you wanted to open it you would have to like mm. cut it in half or do all that stuff but yeah. for like a sandwich you could easily just go you, like take the right. two pieces of bread and open bad. it yeah so that's why i don't I think, think it's a sandwich i just <laughs> think it's a bit it's like <laughs> kind of like a cookie you, but and then we're coming back to like the open faced pop tart again. Holy smokes! <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're gonna have to call this the open faced episode. <laughs> open, yeah, the open faced episode. Um, all right, so now coming back to you, Talia, because based on what you just said, um, what about like peanuts that are still in the shell that you have to like crack open? Like, would those be considered a sandwich based on your definition? No, because like, um you basically have to crack it open so then it and then if you wanted to like if we crack and then you can eat the peanuts but then right. for like a normal sandwich you just go why not, why not? because mm -hmm. you have to crack crack it open and then it's like no do you eat the shell so you eat the unless you eat the shell at least you eat a hole so oh. so mm -hmm. the act of cracking is where it, it gets us with our with our sandwich so we can't crack it to open it up, correct? I think it's more about the eating of the, the shell, myself. <laughs> you don't eat the shell. Yeah. Some do. That, that would be eat like, if bread. you're, yeah, if you're not, if you don't eat the shell, then that would be like a double open faced sandwich. <laughs> like that would be, now we're, now we're really getting carried away. 
Yeah. Well, okay. Let, let's take this a little bit away from food for a moment. Um, and I think, I think it was Talia that you said, you know, if, if you ask for a sandwich, no one's going to ever bring you a hot dog. Right. So I'm just curious for both of you to weigh in. How much does it matter what other people think or what like the community tells us is a sandwich or people just seem to know as a sandwich? How much does that matter? When we define it things, it doesn't matter that much. It just matters what you think. But um, like a lot of people, I'm not saying everyone, but a lot of people think like if you ask for a sandwich, they'll give you like a piece of bread, toppings in it, and then another piece of bread. But if like, because like if I even ask my parents, I say, "Can I have a sandwich?" They'll give me an like a sandwich. They wouldn't give me a hot dog. Mm. <laughs> And, and something that was interesting to us when you, you're now that you're asking Chris about what other people think, we were curious to actually look up the definition, you know, and, and try to understand like what is the accepted definition and, and the accepted definition says that a hot dog is a sandwich, but then I also, uh, at least in the dictionary. We I were looked, looking at I looked more yeah. and like, that's where I got like another thing. It was like, like it was like if you went to like a hot dog vendor and asked for a hot dog they wouldn't get like they would um or you ask for a sandwich they're gonna think like you're crazy because like if you ask for a hot dog they're gonna give you a hot dog but if you ask for a sandwich they're gonna be confused because they only sell hot dogs yeah so we we were i guess kind of maybe shocked um that it was actually formally in the definition but then we started to think about that. And, you know, sometimes definitions aren't necessarily, you know, maybe widely either known uh, or, or accepted. And, and this was one that, you know, when we started to think about some of these scenarios, we were like, well, if, if that's the true definition and that's, that's for real, at least here in our, you know, experience, um, it doesn't seem to be the case. At least everyone we know doesn't seem to, you know, abide by that rule so we found that kind of interesting as we were just you know kind of brainstorming on this we were i was actually shocked i was like what you know why don't we look at the definition that might be good support for us and we're like oh we don't want to talk about the definition when we <laughs> when we bring this up <laughs> and and so, right, so same, same to you though like how much does it matter what other people believe is a sandwich or, or you think they would believe does that matter in your definition no you want to elaborate on that? Does it matter what other people think? Mm -mm. Why not? Because everybody has their own opinion. Everybody has their own opinion. Okay. And it's okay that we have our own? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, now this, uh, this last question for me is actually going to go directly to John and Kyle. Um, this question, this hot dog is a sandwich question. How is this question useful to math teachers? And I'll actually start with Kyle, and then we'll go over to John right after. So Kyle, how is this question useful for math teachers? Yeah, I, I think it's great. And actually, I think it's a, a great follow up to, you know, your discussion around the, the trapezoid debate, right? That um, in a math class, I think it's like, what's most important is less about it being the definition and more about you know, the math community having at least seeing eye to eye on what the defini definition is. So for example, if Talia and Lucy are in, in the same class and let's say it's not a hot dog we're discussing, maybe it's, you know, maybe it's something in math and they're able to at least voice their you know, their beliefs, their under their current understandings or what they believe to be true, and they can articulate that, that thinking, I think, is is the piece, which, again, is is why both of you are doing this podcast, right? That thinking is really what we're after. It's less about being accurate, quote unquote, whatever that, you know, really even means, right? Some person or some group decided that this is what it is. Um, I look at it as, you know, all of the thinking I, I learned through the process of planning with Talia, you know, I, I thought it was going to be, you know, easy for us to, to prepare for this, but I, I didn't realize how hard it, you know, it actually is, especially working with a younger, you know, a younger student to sort of understand like what, what is a debate and, you know, like what, like, what are we trying to achieve here? So um, through this process, I, I, I just think, you know, 
it, as long as you're able to sort of, you have some rules. And I realized that some of, some of what we thought our rules were, weren't quite what they appeared to be based on the questioning that, that both of you had given us is like, oh, wait a second, I didn't really think about that. So it kind of forces us to kind of go back to the drawing board and sort of go, wait a second, maybe we need to redefine our definition a little bit. And uh, I think the process just at least lets you think more deeply about it and, uh, and involve that thinking. Did you have something? And John, uh, what about you? Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I echo um, all the things that Kyle ha has just said. And if I, I toss in the, say, content uh, piece to this, if you think about like this, knowing the definitions and knowing the properties in, uh, of certain elements in mathematics, like we talk, let's talk geometry, like just screaming at me to talk about oh, the this. definitions between a rectangle and a square or, or where, like, how do I define a particular type of triangle? Or when, when we're talking about, say, the distance between a point and a line, and, you know, there's, there's a lot of geometrical ideas that are rooted in definitions. And, and when we talk about proofs, you know, in ge geometric proofs all in there. And so, uh, an activity like this, like what Kyle is saying is like really great to bring out the discussion and whether it's right or wrong, but I think it's also really great because it's such a low floor activity like this activity itself to, to debate a hot dog is like, an, I feel like a necessary first entry level into this this realm of looking at definitions to help prove things or also to help kind of like justify things and so such a low floor thing to get your kids in your classroom uh talking sharing debating you know that they're all going to have opinions about this and and you shaping it like you guys did in this yeah, debate, i was going to say the facilitator it. moves was was key to keep this right. discussion yeah, you, going right you, sh you shaped it to talk about like certain pieces that would say well would this work would this work like that's such a so pro move there and if you think of a teacher is doing that too kind of shaping that discussion and then all of a sudden going, okay, well, we, we talked about this definition. Now let's talk about this other one over here. And it's now like this, hey, we already did this. Now we easily can start talking about something else. So I feel like a, like a really nice low floor activity as an entry level into talking about definitions, proofs, that kind of thing in, in whatever class. Well, and awesome. you know, to, to add on to that real quick before I, I let Chris go, they, you know, you talked about this being a very low floor. Um, Chris actually has a lot of resources that are very low floor on his website, the lesniak.com website. Uh, and one in particular that we have started with as a low floor is like, what's better, cats are better than dogs or dogs are better than cats. You know, that's another one that even <laughs> low floor. Easy answer again. I mean, there's, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we should have debated um, that, Kyle. We should have. So, uh, but like, even with like kindergarten students and first grade students, like you're able to access that with students to get them to, to kind of you know, not just state a claim, but also have reasoning of why. So that's kind of like why we did this low floor, uh, you know, debate, but it's a much grander thing. Uh, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, I have one last question for the girls here, Lucy and Talia. So kind of like what we just asked your dads, I wonder, can you say, what do you think would be the benefits or what, what good would it be for students to have a debate like this in math class? Mm -hmm. Do you think do you think that you learned something through this experience? Yeah, do you think so this is what, fun to do in your class? Like what? Yeah, why? How do you feel? <laughs> I feel yeah. good. <laughs> do you feel fun? I wonder, do you feel more confident in what you were thinking before? Like even though we prepared after doing the, the debate, do you feel like you could talk about this with somebody else like even you know, even more deeply next time? I know I do. I, I've got tons of ammo now. Yeah, Lucy, Lucy was, I think, just uh, thinking about what we just did here as, what'd you say? Group work. And, and mm. that's, what? you like group work? It's your favorite? And this is an element of group work. Are we do We did some group work here and we discussed. Why do you like group work so much? Because you work with your friends. You get to work with your friends, yeah. And if you don't do group work, you don't get to work with your friends. Is that is that the case? Okay. Why, why is it fun to work with your friends? 
everyone has different ideas that we can put together. Everyone has different ideas that we can put together. Okay, I like it. I like it. I'm wondering too, for for both the girls, we had very different opinions, but yet, did you feel like we were like ever in an argument or in like anyone was like raising their voice or, you know, even though we were disagreeing, do you feel like how Rob and Chris were helping us facilitate this? Do you feel like this could also be helpful outside of math and in just everyday life when you're maybe not agreeing with something? Mm -hmm. Like, what do you think, Luz? What do you think, Luz? Mm -hmm. You were talking very loud. I was talking loud. <laughs> she called you out, Dad. <laughs> I guess so. I guess Whole I was family too loud. Can hear him from upstairs. Look at this. Yeah. Sean was too loud. I was raising my voice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we can stop there. This concludes our questioning round and we'll now end by giving each side a final minute or two to make their final arguments. And we're going to begin with John and Lucy. You have uh, two minutes. Go. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, so we are going to reiterate that we believe a hot dog is a sandwich. Uh, we, we've got a couple points to make about that. One, uh, mostly kind of making sure that we comment on your guys' uh, points about why it was not a sandwich. But uh, one, we're going to start with Lucy's going to talk about the idea that you guys thought that there was a limited amount of toppings you could put on a hot dog. We disagree. Uh, Lucy, go. Um, the toppings that you could put on a hot dog are chili, cheese, tomatoes, lettuce. Anything else? No. Anything else? Are you sure? See, that, that feels pretty <laughs> limiting to me. I don't know. <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> Catch up, yeah. I think mustard, relish. Well, we had talked about that pretty pickles, much. Any, onions. yeah, pickles, onions, anything you put on a sandwich, you can put on a hot dog, right? You can put mayonnaise on a hot dog. I yes, always put can. mayonnaise on a hot dog. It's disgusting, though. Oh, Just say put everything on. Right. Uh, we all, you Lucy, you can be a that. pierce. There two pieces. There was two pieces of bread. You were really fixated on that. We still disagree with that in the sense that two pieces of bread is still one piece of bread cut. So that's really the saints of bread, uh, which is a hot dog is really the yeah. same piece of bread folded. And then the last piece you guys were talking about this restaurant idea. If you go to a restaurant and you order a hot dog uh, and you get a sandwich, that would be that would be heartbreaking or and vice versa. And uh, I think we agree with that piece. We're, and, we're, and our point there is we're not saying that a hot dog is uh, 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 that, that it, we're not saying that it uh, is not not a sandwich. We're saying we're saying it's a special type of sandwich. So, yes, you wouldn't get that if you ordered it, but it's still a sandwich. This is a special. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you both. And with the final word, we have Kyle and Talia. So your two minutes Talia begins now. All right. So Talia wanted, she had something she wanted to mention earlier, and she wants to take this opportunity to bring up once again, a, another sort of additional point, which I don't know if is against the rules, but we're going to go for it, T, like another scenario that again, just might sway people a little. What do you think? So if you had a hot dog day at school, you would obviously get a hot dog, not a sandwich. Mm. But if you had a sandwich at day at school you would get a sandwich not a hot dog mm. and if you got a hot dog on a sandwich day everyone would be confused but if you got a sandwich on a hot dog day everyone would still be confused right so it kind of kind of um, um kind of maybe um like removes this things. idea that it's a special sandwich which i thought was a very interesting point to uh, to think of through like, here there are two different things like it might seem like they're the same thing, but to me, it's like two totally different things. Yeah, and and you know, based on what we've heard, a lot of different examples have been given, and and we thought long and hard about this uh, this hot dog being a special sandwich. And for us, we feel like the one of that definitive characteristic for us. We said that uh, uh, we didn't call it a property. What do we call it? A feature, right? You had said the feature of a, a sandwich that a hot dog doesn't have is that that two-ness to it so like there being two things kind of holding it together and and when you modify when you when you mess with that when you want to you have to like name it something different like an open-faced 
sandwich. So what like a hot dog. Fun drink. So, so it's almost like a hot dog. Not a hot is dog a dog anymore? A no. hot dog is a permanently open faced sandwich. I said, I said this earlier. I don't know if I kept it in, but I remember putting this. I put um a hot dog. Like if you if someone said like someone people usually say pass me a hot dog bun um because it's like usually you would have like it's usually considered one bun just mm. cut in half but not all the way down but then i said like if it but it's considered one bun unless it breaks because like people usually say pass me two pieces of bread so i can make a sandwich or pass me a, a bun so i can make a hot dog so in summary and this will be the last before our very that that got big our our summary here uh we're, we're gonna say that a hot dog is like a mono meal and a sandwich is like a binomial you know they they're similar but they they, they are very very distinctly different so the pierce family will say that a hot dog is not a sandwich yeah that is not. A wonderful mathematical comparison to end on. Thank you all. That concludes our debate. Wow, you've given us so much to think about. And also, that was a ton of fun. Thank you. Uh, and now it is up to our listeners to take a moment, ponder all these amazing arguments uh, from both sides, and consider what resonated with you and which side you stand on. <laughs> we'll pause for a moment here to give you a chance to think. Uh, feel free to pause the podcast and think out loud with a friend. And we want to hear from you. What did you think of this? Which side are you on? Go to our Twitter at Debate Math Pod to vote for who you think was more convincing in this debate. We will leave it up for one week and tally the results uh, for the following Wednesday night. And huge thanks to all four of our guests. You were very thoughtful and respectful in this debate. No one was too loud, even though you got called out for it, John. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was brilliant and cooperative. And I, I think we got into lots of good nitty gritty ideas here. Uh, real quick, there's a, there's a few people we want to shout out to kind of help bring this to light. Um, first, I want to shout out Justin Ion and Shelby Strong. They revived this debate uh, at the NCTM Regional Conference in New Orleans. And in an upcoming, depending on when you're listening to this, the upcoming NCTM Indianapolis uh, conference, they are going to be reviving it again. If you're in Indianapolis, definitely check that out. It's a ton of fun. And they go even deeper into this uh, whole of a hot dog as a sandwich uh, or as a tuna melt pizza. And we can't do this debate without also recognizing Christopher Danielson and Megan Schmidt and the whole sandwich chat, hashtag sandwich chat on Twitter. And also thanks to all of you who are listening and uh, have been listening to the podcast. We appreciate all of you. And we hope that each time that you listen to us, that you enjoy it, that you learn from us. And also don't forget to vote. It's our very scientific way to make sure we know who won. <laughs> for for zero prizes. Um, and as we wrap up, John, where can listeners find you? Uh, yeah, um, I guess uh, if you are listening, uh, there's a couple places that you can go. Uh, Kyle and I uh, both are the co-hosts of the Making Math Moments That Matter podcast. So we also have a weekly podcast on math education, math. Uh, we talk with, uh, you know, uh, we've actually we mentioned it here. We talked with Chris. We talked with Rob. Uh, we talk with uh, teachers in the classroom. We talk with uh, lots of different people. Kyle and I share sometimes our thoughts on certain math uh, education ideas. We put that out on Monday morning. So if you're listening to this and you want a little bit more uh, math podcasting in your in your daily life or in your life, uh, head on over to uh, makemathmoments.com forward slash podcast. That's where you can find information out about it. Or you can just search in your podcast platform. Kyle, I'll let you share the rest. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that that's probably where friends uh, who are listening to this probably would uh, would probably want to hop over to the podcast. Uh, we also have a lot of problem based math units. We're really, uh, really focused in on trying to be really intentional. Again, I had mentioned earlier about how much learning um, both John and I have done in our own content knowledge and uh, things we wish we knew five years ago, 10 years ago, and we're really trying to, uh, to find ways to get it out into classrooms. So if you head over to the makemathmoments.com website, you can check those out. And uh, yeah, otherwise, uh, we'll, we'll 
be hanging out with you in your ears, hopefully on uh, Monday mornings. And uh, you want to shout out some social media contacts if they want to tweet with you or something? Sure. Uh, We've got, uh, yeah, I was going to say the Make Math Moments account, uh, Make Math Moments. Um, I'm Mathlete Pierce on, on Twitter, uh, but Make Math Moments, I think, is, is on all the platforms. And then uh, John. Yeah, and, and uh, I'm uh, Mr. R, uh, I guess, dash or underscore, I think, geek uh, on Twitter. <laughs> and also we have a, a Facebook group, which is Math Momakers K-12. So check that out as well. Awesome. Thank you all. And that concludes our podcast. All right. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you.